Hello, my name is John Thuma, and today we're going to go over k-means, which is one of my most favorite aster analytic functions. And really what it is, it's from the genre of clustering analytics that is uh, inside of aster. And basically what this is, is a method for commonly uh, and automatically assigning partitions to a data set of n observations or dimensions into clusters or something that we call k. Um, really what it is is about a set of points that belong to the nearest mean when it comes to a centroid or a central point within that uh, cluster. The algorithm converges when there is no change in the assignment of instances of the points in the cluster. So how do we use this in the real world? This is excellent for customer segmentation, for credit risk clustering, customer valuation, and of course, uh, claim risk cost analysis for insurance. So let's go ahead and get started. But before that, I always like to include a fun fact. K-means is also referred to as Lloyd's algorithm, and it has been around since the 1950s. And I can't imagine doing this in the 50s when I didn't have massively parallel systems like Aster to do it in. So let's go ahead and get going here. So before we get started, to implement K-means fully, in Aster, we have a two-step process. We have step one, which is execute the k-means SQLMR function. Um, you have an input table of uh, data points and dimensions and observations. We run that data set into the k-means with its predicates, and we get an output table. That output table is then used by something called k-means plot, which means I'm going to take all the, and really what this output table is, consists of is a set of centroids of clusters. So in this example, you'll see we'll create three centroids or three clusters. We're going to use that centroid as an input to our model. It's an unsupervised learning mechanism. Uh, and then we're going to take that same input table from step one, and we're going to apply all those, uh, those observations to that model and figure out how they apply to the um, to the analytic here. So with that, we have this uh, scatter diagram here, and really what you're looking at are two sets of clusters, and this, this uh, red with green outside of it is what we call a centroid. The average distance or the mean difference between all these points and the centroid is how we develop this cluster, and that's how k-means works. So let's go ahead and get going here. So let's understand our input our input data. Let's understand our use case. So there's a US manufacturer that is um, seeing a lot of new competition from Eastern European automobile manufacturers and they really want to understand these classes better of, of the different types of automobiles so that they can use data to uh, understand how, the, how they can compete better against these automobiles. So they put together a table, uh, car name, and this is the only um, text field. It's, a, it's really an identifier of the car. And these uh, attributes here down below describe how that car works. So you have horsepower, which is the amount of power. Um, you have city miles per gallon, which is the in-town fuel efficiency. Highway manufacturer, or excuse me, um, miles per gallon, which is the highway fuel efficiency. The weight of the car, the length of the car, the width of the car, and of course the uh, MSRP or the retail price of the car. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data input. So I've made this super easy for you. It's a small data set, and believe me, Aster can go out to petabytes. I've, I've seen where we have 50 variables inside our 50 dimensions. Each one of these variables corresponds to the, the input table. Um, you can cut and paste this, and you can actually load this into uh, your Aster and, and give it a shot, and all the code works and whatnot. So I do not recommend loading data into Aster or any database using this kind of mechanism. It will be slow and inefficient. There are better ways of doing it. So um, the other thing is, is that once we run that script, we're going to take a look at the data sets itself. So the car name, here it is. Here's the name of the cars. Here's the horsepower rating. Here's the city miles per gallon and so forth. So we have different data sets. Remember, the car name is a key or a way of identifying that particular automobile. The rest of these are integers or real data types or 
um, float data types. So it's really important that we use those for the rest of the variables inside of our k-means input. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Remember, I always like to put a limit on my SQL command so I don't bring back a lot of data. If this was a billion records, it would bring back a billion records. So we're going to run a k-means SQL MR function. It's very simple. So we select star from k-means and we have different predicates. These are connectivity predicates. This is just basically saying this is the IP address of my queen and this is the port number I'm going to use. I'm going to use the database Beehive. Um, my user ID is DB super user. My password is DB super user. My input table is car input and we just built that table and we populated it. And my output table, this is the name of the table that's going to be generated as a result of my call of k-means and it's going to be called kp means car. And I'm going to run through a number k, which means how many clusters or how many centroids I'm going to develop. And when I run this command, and let me go ahead and bounce out of here, and I will show you what it looks like to run this command. There it is. So here's the select star from k-means. And I won't run this right now because it takes a little time to run on my uh, Aster Express here. Uh, on a real cluster, this would run almost instantane instantaneously. I would run this and then I would get this. You can see here I have three clusters and we'll get into how those work a little bit later and you can see that I have all the variables that across all the dimensions that were inside of my table. And we'll get to that a little bit later. So let's go back to the presentation. And you can see here once your analytic has executed, I can take a look at it, it will say successful. Algorithm converged. And what converged means is that there were no further iterations of movement of my different observations with relationship to their centroid. And so to look at the centroids, I would just take a look at the table that was generated outside of my uh, k-means function, which is select star from kp underscore k-means car limit 100. And you'll see that I have three um, centroids here. And these variables right here correspond to the different numeric values that were in my car input table. You can see here horsepower is green. So this is for centroid zero, was 267 horsepower, 17 for city miles per gallon, highway 24.9, weight 3,700 pounds, length 182 inches, 71 inches in width, and uh, the retail price for cluster zero was forty-six or forty-five thousand dollars. So I basically made this color coded because it's really important that you understand that based on the table that we just created for the k-means input, the car input, we have a result which looks at all the dimensions in that table, and you'll notice that I do not have. My, my car identifier, my car brand and, and uh, my name. So let's go ahead, and take a look. So the next step would be to run a k-means plot. And what this is going to do is it's going to apply the output. This is a model. This is an unsupervised model that was generated out of my means query, out of my k-means query. And I'm going to use that as an input, as a dimension to uh, be able to build a class or a uh, the relationship with the centroids from my um, from my original data set which is car input so select star from k means plot on car input partitioned by any on kp means car which is the output of our model and in, in k means and we're going to order that by in my centroids table is obviously kp means car order by cluster id and car name so if you cut and paste this, you can run this command inside of uh, Teradata Studio here. Let me go ahead and take a look, and that's exactly what the data looks like. Let me scroll down, and there is my code. So I basically just highlight this and hit run. And um, so this right here is my data set, which we'll get to a little bit later, but you can see here the name of my cars. Here's the cluster, the centroid that it belongs to from the original k-means function. You see zero one and two. So if I come back and I look at that, I have zero, one, and two. And you'll see that my cluster ID is zero, one, and two. And then I have all of my variables that uh, my dimensions that made up my k-means process for that particular automobile. 
So let's go ahead and let's continue. And let's look at the output. So after looking at the, you, you really got to look at the data and you have to look at, at the way the, the um, centroids behave. So you got a zero, you have one, and you have two. And if I look across, this is really what I'm calling my midsize segment. And so if I look over here, $44,000 for the retail price, my horsepower is about the middle. And then if I look down here, it's my affordable segment or my compact segment. You'll see that I have a little bit lower horsepower and I have about a, maybe about a five to $10,000 variance in price. It's lower than the uh, midsize. And then my luxury segment, which is um, segment one or K, or K means centroid one, actually is a much higher price for the vehicle. And you'll see that the horsepower is higher and I would expect that. Um, so it looks like uh, this K means uh, algorithm inside of Aster with two commands is a very powerful and fun analytic to run. It's one of my favorites and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. So thank you very much and happy Happy day.